What's good, fam? It's Teacher Ready back with another reaction. This time we're doing Bert Kreischer, The Machine. This has been a big request from a lot of you. A lot of you have been asking for me to do more comedy related stuff. And a lot of you say I look a little bit like Bert Kreischer. So I figured, why not? Uh, I come from a Russian background, for those who don't know. So I can relate to any Russian mafia stories because I got a few of my own. Let's get into it. When I was 22, I got involved with the Russian mafia. Here's how it happened. I went to school at Florida State. I was not a very good student. I was there uh, like seven years. I was there th in most of the 90s. I, I was in college longer than grunge music was around. Fair enough. <laughs> so, this is how bad of a student I was. One time I signed up for a Russian class thinking it was Spanish. And it took three classes before I realized, I don't think this is Spanish. <laughs> so I got up to leave the teacher who was hot. He definitely worked out. <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't, it was a girl. It was a girl. And she was hot. She still is hot. She stopped me. She goes, don't go anywhere. I need 14 kids to teach this class. You're the 14th. I need to teach this class in order to get my master's. So if you sit back down, you don't have to do anything all semester and I'll just give you a C. I was like, uh, Strasbourgia, bitches, I'm back. <laughs> so I he was trying to say, I think, Zdrastvuti, which is hello. So he said, hello, bitches, I'm back. I had the same situation actually in college. Even though I spoke Russian and I could read Russian, I couldn't write in Russian. So they made me take a language and I ended up taking Spanish. And I had uh, this teacher and the class didn't work out for me time-wise. So I was going to drop out. And she was also going for her master's degree. And she said, look, I need all the students I can get. Uh, if you stay, like you'll pass. She didn't guarantee me an A, but she's like, you'll pass. And I was, hey, it's the you bitches. Took Russian one, two, three, and four, never learned a word. <laughs> Think about what I'm saying. I took two years of a language, took four semesters of my college career, four, four semesters. Russian four was taught in Russian. Do you have any idea what it's like to go to a class and sit there like an immigrant at the DMV all day? Like, <laughs> The end of Russian 4, same teacher pulls me aside. She's like, we're taking a trip to Russia. If you go, you'll get a minor. I was like, okay, hold on. <laughs> you know, I can't really speak, read, write, or understand the language, right? She's like, I'm fucking well aware of that. <laughs> you got to remember, <laughs> I was taking tests in a language with which I was unfamiliar with their alphabet. <laughs> Do you have any idea what it's like to take a test and make up hieroglyphics? <laughs> and the answer is star circle hashtag shoe. She goes, it doesn't matter. We need kids to make this trip happen. And if you go with all the classes you've taken and the ones you will take, dude, you will get a minor. And I was like, that's all you had to say. Let's go to Russia and fuck some minors. <laughs> <laughs> it's a different, it was different <coughs> minor, obviously. Oh my God. I learned that the hard way. So we went to Russia in 1995. This is when the mob ran everything. And they told us that our very first night. They sent yeah. the whole class down. They're like, listen, we have paid off the mafia to keep you safe. In exchange for our money, they give us two young gangsters. I'm in the room like, this trip just got fucking awesome. <laughs> the word for gangster in Russian is banditi. They go, these banditi yeah. are going to live with us. They're going to walk you to class. They're going to walk you back from class. They're going to take you on field trips, walk you back from field trips. Do not speak to them. They're in the mafia. Do not look at them, do not engage them, do not interact with them. I was like, well, they're gonna be my best fucking friends. <laughs> so the first night I grab a bottle of vodka and a six pack of Baltica, which is our local beer, and I planned a sentence. I was gonna say, Strasvutsia, Minyasavud Bert, Ochimbriatna, Yarabota, you koshka. Does anyone speak Russian in here? Yes. So basically, 
Uh, he pronounced it very well, too. Uh, he said, Здравствуйте, меня зовут Bert. Uh, so basically, he said, hello, my name is Bert, and I work the cat. I'm pretty sure he was trying to say the pussy, but he meant literal cat, like meow meow cat. But yeah, in the 90s, I mean, even today, uh, it's no different than here in the United States. There are some cities you go to, like you need uh, to know people. Like you need to know, like shot callers well, is what we would call them here. Uh, you go to New York, Atlanta, you know, any of the big cities and you can't just roam around. I mean, I'm not talking about you going to like the, you know, the, the Hilton hotel to visit somebody or anything. Like if you go into the city city, like you got to know people, you got to know shot callers, you got to get permission in some cases, if you're going to go to certain areas, right? Uh, so it was the same thing in Russia, and it still is to this day, but in the 90s especially. Like, if you were going to go, I knew plenty of people who went to visit uh, Russia or Ukraine even, like Kiev in Ukraine, uh, and they never made it back. They never made it back because they didn't know the local customs, they didn't know the nomenclature, they didn't say things correctly. I know a dude who got shot and killed for ordering the wrong song in a restaurant uh, who went to visit uh, uh, Moscow. So you definitely needed to know people, and yeah. So back to uh, Bert working the kitty. I love that someone says no. No. I did a head count earlier, it doesn't look like it. I'll tell you what the sentence says. It's a badass sentence. I worked all day on it. Hello, my name's Bert. It's very nice to meet you. I work pussy. <laughs> kind of. It really means I work with cats. I didn't know the fucking language. What do you expect? Uh, it doesn't matter because the second the door opens and I'm face to face with a real Russian gangster with the wife beater and the tattoos with the track pants and the cigarette. And he, he just stares me up and down. A frat boy from Florida State. I was wearing a fanny pack. He just it was the 90s. And goes, Stole. I fucking panicked. And everything I had planned on saying flooded out of my head. And all I said to him in Russian in his doorway was, I am the machine. <laughs> and he started laughing. He goes, what did you say? I was like, I'm the machine. He grabs me and he goes, come in and tell my friends. Brings me in a room full of nine Russian gangsters drinking and smoking and just goes, stop. <laughs> tell them what you said. Now I'm like, fuck it, I'm the machine! They looked at each other, looked at me, and they're like, fuck it, he's the machine! I think what Bert was trying to say, uh, first off, when he said the Russian gangster was like, Stor? that's uh, just saying, what? Uh, machine in Russian is machina. And machina could be machine, it could also be car. Um, so like a washing machine is стиральная машина. Uh, but if you have a car, they're like, go get the машина. Uh, but also it's close to мужчина. Мужчина means man. So he could have been trying to say like, I'm the man. But he said машина instead of мужчина. Мужчина. And I became the machine, and these guys loved me. Yes. The, you got to realize, though, the reason they loved me is I went shot for shot with them that night, all night long. Oh, that's like respect morning, right there. But all I knew how to say in their language was, I'm the machine! <laughs> and I fuck cats. <laughs> We did everything together. We, uh, like the guy that answered the door, his name was Igor. He was like my best friend. We did everything together. We ran a pool hall scam. We stole a boat. It was literally the best summer of my life. Fair enough. Fair enough. And then one day, the whole class is taking I a trip buy to it. Moscow. It's an overnight train trip. And I say to Igor, I go, this is going to be a blast. We got to be in the same cabin. And he goes, I can't go. I said, why not? And he goes, different mafia runs train, different mafia runs Moscow. I said, well, hold on. What's that mean for me? And he goes, don't worry, I set up banditi, I tell them about you, they'll take care of you. Sure enough, we get to the train station, and he introduces me to my two new gangsters, Igor and Igor. 
Of course, Igor and Igor. And he says to me, he goes, guys, this is the machine. If you give the machine vodka, you'll have a great time. <laughs> the big ear of the two Igors looks like a kid on Christmas. He's like, oh, I can't wait to play with a machine. <laughs> he grabs me and he goes, the machine doesn't sit in coach. The machine sits in first class with us. I'm like, that's what I'm fucking talking about. <laughs> we go to first class and it is pimped out with booze, food, and here's the real gangster part. Second the train takes off out of the station, everyone that works on the train comes in to pay their respects. The conductor walked in, rips off the stars and stripes to his shirt, places them on my lap and goes, this is a present for the machine. It would be an honor to do a shot of vodka with the machine. I'm 22 years old thinking, huh, these machine stories might have gotten out of control. Uh, so I don't know about that. I don't know about the conductor coming in and ripping off his stars and stripes and giving... But uh, I do believe that you hang out with Russian banditi. Uh, the proper way to say it is banditi. Uh, you hang out with banditi, you know, enough, you're going to get into some shit. Like, I, I've hung out with a lot of banditi in my day, especially when I was younger and got into some stuff. I wasn't always teacher ready, you know. But, um, yeah, well, like, we'd be randomly in a place, and he's like, hmm. We were in a video store one time. He's like, they must make a lot of money here. I think we should rob it. And guess what we did? I plead the fifth. Um, but he's right about, you know, different uh, mafia factions or different gangster factions. It doesn't necessarily have to be mob. Banzite aren't really uh, necessarily part of any, like, mafia family like we would associate here with the Italian mafia. Uh, it was more like sects, more like, you know, um, uh, Mexican mob or black mafia. Uh, you had different sects. So different sects run different sections. So it's the same thing, like, like I said here. You go to Atlanta, you know, different sections, different cities, going to have different people you got to speak to. Uh, and it's the same thing in Russia. Yeah, you got different, you know, because you're crossing, uh, you know, through different jurisdictions. So you got people on, you know, who run the train, who run that part of the city. Then when you get to your destination, you got somebody else who runs that part of the city. So you got to talk to different people. But also, yeah, just stealing a boat, stealing a car, robbing a place, you're going to get into some of that stuff. We drink all the booze in an hour, and Big Igor stands up, and he goes, Machine, we go to the bar cart to get more vodka. I'm like, fuck it. I'm in the mob. I'll do whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> we roll into the bar cart like a big dick in a locker room. Just, not that I've ever been that guy, but I've seen it. <laughs> just smack. You know the look where everyone looks like, oh, shit, okay. <laughs> oh, someone's here. Okay, all right. <laughs> Igor looks at me, and in Russian, he says, Machine, go behind the bar and grab bread. In Russian, in Russian. And I understood him. For a second, I'm like, I'm fucking learning. <laughs> I'm learning the language my way, not through flashcards and textbooks, but by joining the mafia. <laughs> I get behind the bar, I'm like, Igor, I know what you said. He's like, go for your machine. Can the machine find cheese? And I was like, Sir, cheese, I got it. Give me another one. And he's like, grab vodka. I was like, I already know that one. Give me another one. He's like, grab the money. I'm like, huh? He goes, grab the fucking money. And I realized at that instant, uh, we're robbing the bar cart. And I'm the one doing it, hooked on phonics style. I grab the money, walk out. Two of my classmates see me, and they're like, you're in so much trouble. Go back to our first class cabin and within five minutes, the head chaperone of this train trip, not the whole trip, just this train trip. She was an English teacher who did not speak Russian, who hated me before I robbed the train. <laughs> <laughs> she comes over to our first class cabin and swings the door open with that like liberal arts confidence, just. <laughs> this shit is over. You're done. You're done. Stand up right now. You, you stand up. Stand, how dare, how, you're done. Stand up. And Big Igor looks at me confused, then smiles, takes a big sip of vodka, spits it in her eyes and goes, 
No one talks to the machine like that. That's right, bitch. No one talks to the machine like Shuts that. Shuts the door in her face. He goes, fuck that bitch. This is Russia. Word is bond, son. That is right. Don't worry, machine. When it gets dark, we have good time. I'm like, what the fuck are we doing when it gets dark? Reaches in his pocket, pulls out a ring of keys, and he goes, we're robbing the whole fucking train. I'm a good person. I don't cheat on, I don't cheat on, this is why, I, let me tell you, I don't cheat on my wife. I don't cheat on my wife because one morning, our whole family was in bed, the dogs, the cats, the girls, my wife, and we were just giggling, and it was pure, it was perfect. And I, don't, I thought to myself, I don't ever want to screw this up. This is the most important thing. This is what it's, life's about. And they got up to make chop, chocolate chip pancakes. And I laid in bed and I said, I will never cheat on my wife. I had a conversation with myself. I said, if I ever get into a situation where a hot girl's flirting with me, or I think she's flirting with me, and it seems like it could go further, I'm just going to cock block myself. I'm just going to look her in the face in front of everyone and go, I don't cheat on my wife! I am the machine! Now, I may be wrong. She may not be hitting on me. She may throw a drink in my face, slap me. Or I may be right. I, none of that matters to me. What matters to me is that I don't cheat on my wife because I've already had that conversation. Here's the problem. I never had that conversation about robbing trains. <laughs> so when presented the opportunity, I thought I'd be like, not me. I'm going to go back and work on my verbs. <laughs> but apparently, when presented the opportunity, I'm the guy that's like, fuck it. Let's start with my class. <laughs> so we robbed them first. While they slept, if that makes it better, and then we robbed the whole train. And if there's any consolation, we robbed me too. My bag was with them. <laughs> and then we drank all night long. All night long. Like literally until 6 in the morning. Top five drunkest I've ever been without throwing up in my entire life. We pull into Moscow at 6 a.m. I'm pissed drunk. You ever been so drunk? You're like, I know. Yeah, definitely. Um, when they said, uh, grab the bread when he was robbing the train car, I was like, yeah, that's some Russian shit, especially like black bread. Russians love black bread. I love black, like Russian black bread is delicious, uh, with some vodka. And then you get some, some pickled stuff. Russians love pickled shit, pickled, uh, pickled tomatoes, pickled pickles, of course, even pickled watermelon. Now, before you make a face and be like, pickle watermelon, what's wrong with you, son? Pickled watermelon is the shit. If you've never tried pickled watermelon, I'm telling you, you have not lived. You know I got a piss, but I can't find my dick. <laughs> Train stops, sun's up, I'm hammered, door opens, same teacher, not mad. Curious, right? She looks me in the eyes, smiling, and goes, I want to be the one to tell you they've alerted the police. And I look out. And on the platform, my whole class is standing there with a cop, talking. They're upset. They've been robbed. I get it. <laughs> Apparently, they'd never heard snitches get stitches. <laughs> Big Igor sees this, and it's completely unfazed. He's like, oh, don't worry. I talked to police for both of us. This is a rush. Oh, thank God. He cracks a bottle of vodka. I'm like, nah, I wouldn't bring that out to an officer, maybe. Lights a cigarette, walks out to the cop, who's taking a statement. The cop is taking a statement. Igor walks up behind him, grabs him by the arm, spins him around, and goes, fuck you! We fuck you in the mouth! We fuck you in the ass! We... I'm like, stop with the fucking we shit! Now the cop... Yeah, that's, that's something funny about Russians when they, uh, if you've ever run across like, like a Russian Russian, you know, not first generation, but somebody who's recently come over here and you ever wonder why they say, I fuck you. It's because literally when you say fuck you in Russian, you're saying I like me, the possessed, like I, I fuck like you want, you want that person to know, like I fuck you. So him saying, we fuck you. Yeah, definitely. Cop is just staring at me and I hear him bark out, which I don't even know what that means, but it doesn't sound like you're okay. Stay there. Uh, is come here, sit down. It is a come to Jesus moment where you know you fucked up. All I thought as I walked to the cop who's standing in front of the class, I just robbed. Next to the gangster, I robbed them with. My only thought was, this isn't how I plan on spending my second junior year. 
and the gulag taking hot dicks to the throat. <laughs> I get five steps from the cop who looks impatient as shit. He takes two big ass steps, grabs me by the arm, spins me away from my class, away from Igor, pulls me right into his face and he goes, so, I understand you're the machine. <laughs> nice. Tonight, you party with us. I was like, what? He's like, tonight you party with us, yes? And I looked at him and I was like, wait, I'm not in trouble? And he gets so close to me, I can smell his morning cigarette, and he goes, no. <laughs> Fuck that bitch, this is Russia. <laughs> <laughs> perfection, 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 yeah, perfection. I, I love it. Uh, that was fantastic. Uh, do I believe 100% of the story? Mm maybe maybe 80 percent of it uh but it's a great story i mean it's comedy it, it, we know we have to suspend belief and and not question the situations too much but i really enjoyed it let me know in the comment sections if you liked it what was your favorite part also let me know any other comedy stuff uh that you'd like me to react to you know maybe take a little break from the history stuff anything history related that's comedy even better i'm teacher eddie and Zdrastwiti, bitches. I'm the machine. And shouting out the Patreons as always, the Chancellors, Alex S. and John Alonzo, and the Principals, Chad A. and Clement. Thank you for watching, and tune in next time.